Mr. President, Assistant Secretary General, colleague foreign ministers and other heads of delegation, distinguished representatives, good afternoon. It is a truly great pleasure to join you all in this beautiful city of Cancun for the 47th regular session of the OAS General Assembly. Allow me, on behalf of my delegation, to express our deep gratitude to the government and people of Mexico for the very warm hospitality extended and for the excellent arrangements made for this meeting. Mr. President, colleagues, our responsibility as foreign ministers to promote the ideals and work of the organization is a challenging one. It requires our collective and sustained commitment to the principles of the OAS Charter and the Inter-American Democratic Charter, to which we have all subscribed. And I wish to underscore Jamaica's commitment thereto. Our engagement on the issues confronting us as a region require that we adopt agreed, principle-based positions on those of common interest and take the time to work in good faith towards achieving consensus on the more difficult ones. We should not be deterred by challenges thrown up, nor should we lose sight of the fact that our deliberations must lead to meaningful outcomes which serve to improve the well-being and prosperity of the peoples of the Americas. Mr. President, the theme for this year's General Assembly is certainly most timely, given our focus as individual member states on improving our economic circumstances, raising the standard of living of our peoples, and protecting their rights through increased engagement and partnership. In this context, it must be acknowledged that the OAS has greatly enhanced its relevance in addressing the development challenges of small states by aligning its activities with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development through the Executive Secretariat for Integral Development, SEDI. We applaud these efforts as their activities link economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental protection. Furthermore, they consistently seek to employ an integrated approach to vulnerability reduction and resilience building and involve non-traditional stakeholders such as the private sector and civil society in their programs and activities. Mr. President, we share the view that this mechanism provides us all with opportunities for partnership and concerted action to deliver prosperity. And Jamaica in this context calls on the OAS to ensure that it continues to provide SEDI with the requisite budgetary support. Mr. President, in countries such as ours, inclusive, sustainable economic growth is an essential component of prosperity. We believe that towards that end, we have the opportunity at the OAS to use existing mechanisms that support investment in our youth, specifically in improving their skills to attract higher value investments and more meaningful and decent jobs. Building human capacity and self-reliance through access to higher education are additional reasons to call on the OAS to continue to support its scholarship programs in a meaningful way. And we adi additionally thank Chile for this afternoon's announcement of its commitment to support this program in a tangible way. Mr. President, we interpret inclusive economic growth to mean employment for our people, real jobs that will include, improve the quality of their lives. In Jamaica, both in recognition of human aspiration and as an antidote to crime, we believe all our young people must have an opportunity to develop their knowledge, skills, and attitudes. We have therefore sought to streamline our youth training programs while expanding access and have recently launched a national apprenticeship and service program. We believe, however, that these can be enhanced by increased youth exchange programs between the countries of our region which will strengthen collaboration, enhance mutual understanding, and reduce language barriers while supporting regional youth development. Mr. President, the OES also has existing programs to support the growth of MSMEs in order to improve production, facilitate innovation, and enhance competitiveness. These are clear paths to prosperity and should therefore be supported and expanded. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. Mr. President, many of our countries have recorded progress in areas such as democracy, promoting the empowerment and leadership of women, and taking greater care of our most vulnerable citizens. Significant challenges, however, subsist. 
Some of our countries, including those in the Caribbean, continue to be affected adversely by the middle-income country status designation based solely on GDP. This designation ignores factors such as high levels of indebtedness and extreme vulnerability to exogenous shocks such as natural disasters now exacerbated by climate change. This designation therefore hampers access to much needed funding to spur catalytic growth, address adaptation needs, and to advance our development process. For several middle-income countries such as Jamaica, who are committed to achieving the sustainable development goals, dialogue and concerted action at all levels, including in the regional fora, are of critical importance. It is in this forum of the General Assembly, therefore, that we remind colleagues and partner countries, especially those who sit in fora where we do not, of the reality and impact of this designation, particularly as we seek to reduce our debt and maintain macroeconomic stability. Jamaica also wishes to share in this body that we have been advocating within multilateral fora for recognition of a special designation of countries as highly indebted middle-income countries. The designation would apply to countries who are highly indebted, but which responsibly and faithfully honor their debt, which are poised for real and sustainable economic transition as they have relatively high levels of health and education, but which are unable to emerge from chronic low growth as they must always choose between debt repayment and growth spending. They often always, Mr. President, also lose economic gains due to recurring natural disasters. For these countries, a HIMIC initiative, a highly indebted middle-income country initiative, could be undertaken to focus on facilitation in trade, technology transfer, security, and adaptation support. This is but one proposal for new and concerted action geared at prosperity. Mr. President, colleagues, beyond education, youth development, and economic growth, prosperity certainly entails respect for human rights, the rule of law, and timely justice outcomes, human capital development, debt reduction, fiscal prudence, and social protection for our nation's most vulnerable, including our women, children, and persons living with disabilities. I'm heartened that these noble objectives continue to bind us together in common purpose and that the OES, an organization of which Jamaica is proud to be a member, remains committed to support us in the achievement of these goals. I thank you.